everyone welcome back to my channel today I have three thriller books that I'm going to be doing little mini reviews for and I'm also going to be talking about the hunt a killer subscription box I don't know if you guys have heard of this but we'll go into a little more detail uh, kind of in the middle of this video on what this is so I have nothing else to say in this intro let's just get into the reviews <laughs> the first book I have to talk about is the whisper man by Alex North so I'm not gonna go into great detail on the summaries of these books during this video because I like going into thrillers as blind as I possibly can. So I'll just say enough to maybe entice you. This one follows multiple perspectives, a father and a son, move to a new town, little boy has imaginary friend, and there are rumors of this whisper man serial killer stealing kids. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I absolutely loved this book. I ended up giving Whisper Man five out of five stars and let me tell you why. I love in my thrillers when we have child characters that are really likable and have examinations on their relationships with their parents. It's one of the things I loved about the book Imaginary Friend, which is my favorite book of all time, that has a mother and a son. This one has a father and a son relationship in it that it's really examining and focusing on. For me, what really made this stand out from the crowd is it did so much more than just the typical thriller where you're trying to solve the case. It focused a lot more on how these characters are dealing with grief and with past trauma and examining parental relationships and things like that that I love in thrillers. It also had slight horror elements, which I was not expecting, but I absolutely loved. Like this book creeped me out in certain parts. I was so impressed with some of the visuals and the horror elements that this also tied in. I don't think it's scary. I don't think it'll keep you up at night or anything like that. So if you scare easily, I wouldn't necessarily want to lead you away from reading this book because I don't think it's like a horror book. But I will say the horror elements in it really, really made me fall in love with this book. So the father-son characters, I absolutely loved. I loved the perspectives we followed and how they all kind of came together at the end. I love the trope of having to work with a serial killer to catch a serial killer. It kind of had Silence of the Lambs vibes a little bit where you're having to work with a serial killer to catch a serial killer. I love that kind of stuff. So this had so much goodness in it that I loved. It had me hooked from page one. And I think, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say this is the fastest paced thriller, but for me, it moved really quickly because I was really invested in the characters. So if you invest in the characters right away and you care about what's going to happen to them, you're going to want to keep reading. And that's what really hooked me and got me through this book so quickly. I just really had to know what was going to happen to these characters. It was so good. So I highly recommend this one. If you like detective mysteries, if you like focusing on turbulent parental relationships, if you like books that maybe focus a little bit more on grief, then check this one out because I think it has so much going for it. It is such a great book. And now I can't wait to read Alex North's second book, The Shadows. I'm very excited for that one. So I definitely think this one lived up to the hype. I've seen mixed reviews, so I know it's not going to be for everybody, but it was definitely for me. Interrupting the thriller reviews to do a quick thriller investigation of our own because a company called Hunt a Killer got in touch with me about their subscription boxes and offered to send me a couple to try out to see if I enjoyed them. So Hunt a Killer is a monthly subscription box. Each month is $25 for the box. And essentially it is putting you in the role of a detective or a private investigator where you are trying to solve a murder mystery. And every box gets you closer and closer to solving the ultimate mystery. But you do have individual missions that you have to complete in each box. I have this box here that we're gonna go into a little more detail on. And my mission for this box specifically is just to find the murder weapon. So inside the box, you get instructions on how to navigate these boxes and you also get your goal for the box. You'll get letters from the private investigators catching you up on the case and how to crack it. 
And then you get all of your hints. And these hints, I'm so impressed with how much detail and effort they put into every hint that they include in the box. This has been something that has been so much fun to sit down and do at night with my husband instead of like a puzzle. If you're looking for something different to try during your nights in, $25 a month for this box. I mean, that's the equivalent of like going out to eat. That's cheaper than going out to eat for two people. So if you just want something fun to try, I love doing these I think that they're so much fun and then again like the more boxes you get the closer and closer you get to solving the ultimate mystery and what's so awesome is hunt a killer sent me a discount code for you guys to use so if you're interested in trying it out you can get your first box 20% off with the code Jesse May if you just apply that at checkout it should apply so I'll link all the information for hunt a killer down below if you guys want to try this out yourself Again, I think it's a great alternative to a puzzle or whatever else you've been doing to keep you busy while you've been staying inside. Now let's get back to the reviews. I realized I forgot to have my mic on for my Whisper Man review, so I hope that you could hear me okay. I have my mic on now, so let's talk about the second book I have to review, and that is The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. This was a completely opposite experience uh, from The Whisper Man. So Chalk Man, just a super vague synopsis, two timelines. One timeline, you're following a group of kids who are all friends and come across something horrible. And then flash forward into the future, something's happening to these kids grown up and they have to go back to the past to find out what happened. Yada, 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 jock man. But getting into my thoughts on this one, I honestly don't have a lot to say about it because at the end of the day, I just didn't care. <laughs> I really didn't care about any of these characters. I really didn't care about anything that happened <laughs> in this book. I don't know why I felt so distanced from these characters and this plot and I didn't care about the twist. I was like, great, it's a twist. <laughs> so this was like the complete opposite experience of The Whisper Man, where I was hooked page one because of the characters. And this one from page one, I realized I really didn't like the kid character that we're following in this book. And for the rest of the book, I just didn't care because I really <laughs> didn't like that character at all. So I like felt bad because I'm probably not going to give it the review it deserves and give you guys a whole lot of detail on exactly what didn't work for me in this book because I've seen great reviews for it. So it definitely like does some things right for some people and I don't want to dissuade you from reading it entirely. But for me, at the end of the day, it was just not connecting to the characters at all. And that's what made me just really not care. I felt that this was dragged on for too long. I didn't like the swapping but between the two timelines. I just really didn't like much at all. <laughs> I just didn't care. I don't know what else to say. I feel so bad. But <laughs> I think that, you know, there are some parts of this book that had moments of brilliance. It talks a lot about like, corruption and it had like these moments where it kind of reminded me of It by Stephen King because the group of kids in the past that you're following are very much bullied and that's how they kind of come together and so you're focusing on that group of kids and developing them. So there were like moments where I was like, oh, this is this is good, okay. And then like something would drag on and I just wouldn't care at all. So, <laughs> so this just wasn't for me, but I definitely don't want to not recommend it because so many people have enjoyed this. I'm really curious to see if any of you guys have read this and what you thought of it. Did you love it? I hope so. Or just, are you like me and just really didn't care much at all what happened? And like the twist at the end was like, okay, like I, I didn't see it coming, but I also like didn't care, you know? So I'm sorry, Chalkman. I ended up giving Chalkman two stars because it just did not capture me at all the way I wanted it to. Especially after reading The Whisper Man, I was like, oh, okay, I have high expectations for every thriller I'm gonna read now because wow I love the Whisper Man and wow what a come down from the Whisper Man reading Chalk Man. Bummer. And the last book I have to talk about is The Breakdown by B.A. Paris. So B.A. Paris wrote one of my favorite thrillers, Behind Closed Doors. I loved that book so I definitely wanted to pick up more of their work and The Breakdown, vague synopsis, 
girl is married to a husband and is driving home one night, sees a car broken down in the rain on the side of the road and in this really sketchy forest and decides to continue driving only come to find out that the woman in that car that was broken down on the side ends up being brutally murdered later that night. So our main character is feeling a lot of guilt and that's all I'm gonna say. This one for me, I have so many mixed feelings on it because I thought it started out so promising. I really, really enjoy B.A. Paris's writing style. I think it's really engaging and very easy to follow and very easy to get wrapped up in. So I like how B.A. Paris writes a lot and so I'm going to continue reading her books. It's just the problem with this one kind of started halfway through the book where our character, our main character, believes she's suffering from early onset dementia because her mother died early from dementia. And so you're kind of in this character's head the entire time. There's no other perspectives. And she's a very unreliable narrator because, and usually I love unreliable narrators, because she's not remembering things, she's afraid she's misremembering things because of her dementia. And so she's kind of has this downward spiral through half of the book. And as the reader, you are in her head, so you feel like you're with her in this downward spiral. You're like, oh my god, this is driving me nuts because I don't know what's going on, what's real, what's real and what's not. It's definitely one of those like girl on the train where you don't know if you can trust the person who's telling you the story. The problem is it goes on for so long about this character, misremembering things, not remembering them at all, incident after incident happening. It, it becomes so repetitive where it was like, eventually I, I, I just kept asking like, why doesn't this character get a planner? Like get a calendar where you could write down these things so, <laughs> so that you could keep Jack, I just didn't understand why this character like resorted to the things she resorted to and like didn't do these like other simple things to try to fix the situation. I it, I just was not understanding the character's decisions at all. I didn't think this main character was very rational in a lot of her thoughts. So it just drove me nuts eventually. Like, whereas I think you're supposed to start feeling anxious towards like that first half of the book because the character is feeling anxious. But then after a while it became, it went from being anxious with the character to just being really, really angry and frustrated with the character because they're not making smart choices at all. So I was just very annoyed with the main character. But then, but then the ending kind of happens. We were like, oh my God, this is now good. Like I'm all in, this is great. I was super into it at the end. And then the very, very end happens and you're like, what? <laughs> it like had me one over, lost me, won me over again, and then totally lost me again by the end. I was like, ah, this is just... <laughs> so like those two moments where it had me won over, I was really excited about the book, which bumped up the rating for sure. This whole time I thought it was gonna kind of waver between two and three stars, but there were those moments of absolute brilliance where I was like, oh my God, this is so good. So it kind of bumped up the, the rating, but not quite enough to get to a four. It's still a 3.5. I would still recommend this one if you haven't read a lot of domestic thrillers before. This felt very formulaic to me. It felt very much like I've kind of read this book before. It didn't do a whole lot different. Whereas Behind Closed Doors, I hadn't read a book like that before. Whereas this one, it, it was very much the same as a lot of others. So if you haven't read a ton of domestic thrillers and you're new to the genre, pick this one up because I, I do think it's a pretty good one. But if you've read a lot of thrillers and domestic thrillers in particular, I, I would pass on this one. I don't think it does enough to differentiate itself from the rest. So 3.5 stars for this one. So that's all I've got for you. Those are the three most recent thriller books I've read. Did you see any that you've read and what did you think of them? Definitely leave those comments down below. Today's booktuber shout out is going to go to Nix. I love her channel so much. She produces such quality 
content. Like I am so impressed with like the editing skills and just the quality of her videos are amazing. You can tell how much effort and love she puts into her videos and her humor is so great. I love her sense of humor. I think she's putting out some of the most unique videos. She always makes me laugh. I love her channel. I can't recommend it enough. She reads primarily fantasy but kind of in all genres so definitely go check her out if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I release new videos every Monday and Thursday and until next time, bye!